When someone mentions digital currency, the first thing that comes to mind is Bitcoin. For the majority of people around the world, both young and old, Bitcoin is the only digital currency they have heard. But did Bitcoin appear out of nowhere? Was Bitcoin the brainchild of a mysterious man going by the name Satoshi Nakamoto? On all counts, the answer is no. Bitcoin is a new technology-enhanced iteration of an old idea. However, blockchain technology as we know it is distinct enough to change the way the entire fintech industry operates. Many people came before Satoshi Nakamoto with the intention of creating digital currency and to power alternative economies, but they all failed for technical, regulatory, and ideological reasons. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today's question of the video is how money got digitalized. So let's get into our time machine and take a look at the history of digital currency. The inception of the cypherpunk era. Several computer programmers decided to rebel and use their code as a weapon. Thus, the cypherpunk movement was conceived in the late 1980s. Their primary goal was to protect people's privacy in the digital world. One of those original programmers was Eric Hughes, who collated their goals and intentions into a book called A Cypherpunk's Manifesto. The cypherpunks desired encrypted and secure digital communications, as well as anonymous transactions. Unlike credit card transactions, where both the payer and the receiver can be identified, cypherpunks envisioned a digital currency that would allow people to send and receive money without being tracked, similar to paying in cash at local stores. David Chom, an American cryptographer, was at the forefront of this digital currency creation. Blind Signatures for Untraceable Payments, a scientific paper he published in 1983, outlined anonymous digital money. He created DigiCash in 1989, putting the concept he outlined in his research into practice. DigiCash was based on blind signature technology, which ensured the security and privacy of transactions between individuals in a manner similar to the cryptocurrency concept we know today. A physical paper document can be used to illustrate the concept of blind signature, as described in his paper. Carbon paper lined envelopes can be used to create the paper equivalent of a blind signature. When a signature is written on the outside of such an envelope, a carbon copy of the signature is left on a slip of paper inside the envelope. At the same time that the DigiCash concept was being realized, leading Dutch supermarket Albert Heijn pressed banking partners to develop a method to allow shoppers to pay directly from their bank accounts in store, which served as the foundation for early point-of-sale systems, and thus one of the earliest examples of electronic cash that we associate with modern digital currencies. They launched the Cypherpunks Distributed Remailer CDR in 1997, which was the first step toward a private communication system, essentially acting as an anonymous, decentralized email system. E-Gold First Digital Currency The first steps toward what is now known as digital currency were taken when most of the world's population was just beginning to have access to the internet. One such example is digital gold, or e-gold. Beginning in 1996, under the direction of an oncologist by the name of Douglas Jackson, a lawyer was able to amass more than 5 million user accounts by the year 2009. Because of its meteoric rise in popularity, Many traditional retailers have begun taking e-gold as payment. The digital currency was backed by gold, and the initiative turned out to be quite profitable. However, as it became popular among thieves and hackers, it became the target of their attention. Its demise can be attributed to persistent attacks on the platform by cybercriminals and the widespread adoption of e-gold as a preferred currency among extortionists and money launderers. B-Money, the Bitcoin predecessor. B-Money works in the same way that Bitcoin does today, in that all users of the currency had a copy of the transaction ledger, which meant that all payments were posted for everyone to see and potentially approve or dispute. The main distinction between B-Money and Bitcoin is that there was no decentralized way to keep track of accounts in 1997. Prior to Bitcoin, Hashcash was arguably the most successful digital currency. This currency was developed to combat email spam and DDoS attacks. Hashcash used the proof-of-work algorithm, which aided in the generation and distribution of new coins, a technique 
used by many of today's cryptocurrencies. Hashcash faced increasing processing power demand, which it was unable to meet, and as a result, the platform became less and less effective until it was eventually shut down, with which nearly a decade of silence ensued, until 2008, when Bitcoin emerged, becoming the world's first decentralized digital currency. Satoshi Nakamoto and the creation of Bitcoin The alias Satoshi Nakamoto is credited with the creation of Bitcoin. However, the true identity of this individual, or individuals, remains unknown to this day. However, Nakamoto was very clear about his intentions. He wanted the concept of a traditional bank, a centralized financial institution, to become obsolete. This is why Bitcoin does not use a centralized registry and all transactions are made between users directly. Following the 2008 financial crisis, there was widespread dissatisfaction with the current centralized banking system. As people became increasingly frustrated, they sought alternatives, which is what Bitcoin was designed to be. As a result, Bitcoin gained traction and evolved into what it is today. While Bitcoin has many similarities to traditional money, portability, scarcity, durability, fungibility, divisibility, and recognizability, it is based on mathematical properties rather than trust in physical backing, such as silver and gold, or central authorities, like fiat currencies. With all of these characteristics, all that is needed for a particular form of money to be valuable is adoption and trust. In the case of Bitcoin, this metric can be measured by the increasing number of Bitcoin users, merchants, and startups. Bitcoin's value, like all currencies, is determined by people's willingness to accept it as payment. Building from Bitcoin Bitcoin serve as a model for other digital currencies to follow as they pave their own roads, either by performing a variety of services or by utilizing private blockchains. Bitcoin was the blueprint. The most notable example of this is Ethereum, which in contrast to Bitcoin, is not solely focused on conducting financial transactions. Ethereum, on the other hand, functions as a blockchain for universal use, which gives it a great deal of adaptability. Vitalik Buterin devised Ethereum in 2013 with the intention of avoiding the challenges that highly specialized blockchains were having when deployed for various use cases. When it was first conceived, Ethereum was intended to be the most advanced blockchain to date by being capable of performing exceptionally well in a wide range of social and business contexts. On the Ethereum blockchain, Ether, ETH functions as the digital money. Transactions, the storage of data, and the running of calculations can all be paid for with this currency. It is fascinating to watch what the future holds for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other developing platforms as research and investment continue inside this quickly expanding area. So what do you guys think about the digitalization of money? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That's all for this video. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment on this video if you enjoy it. Till then, take care. Thanks for watching.